After the commercial disappointment of Catfights and Spotlights, Keisha, Heidi and Amel would begin working on their next studio album, signing with Jay-Z's label Rock Nation and working with their in-house producers in the US. Tensions within the group would lead to a catastrophic outcome and the ultimate breakdown of the band. This is Sugar Babes Sweet Seven. In January 2009, Mutia was back in the music charts, featuring on Asher D's second single, With You, from his album Ashley Waters, as well as the Don E track, The Time Is Now. single out. When I is that do. coming out? End of the month, I think. It comes out on the 27th. 27th. It's called Fallen. Um, it was done by Agent X and me and Ultra, who's a really good friend of mine. Um, we're doing cool. it together. Should we have a look? Yes, Here please. We go. She also promoted the collaborations Falling with Agent X. The day you came and called my heart I never thought that this would be We were never meant to go this far I keep holding Give it back with Tarmac. Later that year, Amel would guest feature on the track Never Leave You by Tinchy Strider, released as the fourth single from his second studio album on the 3rd of August 2009. The song was written by Strider with lyrics by Teo Cruz. The song immediately rushed into the UK and Ireland charts, hitting the number one spot in the UK and number two in Ireland. It knocked the Black Eyed Peas song I Got A Feeling off the UK number one, but failed to knock I Got A Feeling off the Irish top spot, charting just behind it. Cause everything's changed, reminiscing them days, trying to turn the page Cause I've been around the world, I've seen so many places Living the life of work so hard to make it Trading the world for money, stars and power Living my life at a hundred miles an hour I'm in love with you, like it was the first time Like the very first time I'm still loving you, like it was the first time Like the very first time yeah. It's over, I'm driving the scene forward I'm a chauffeur, it's over So come with you and I'm Tired of being in the back I was sent, I was chosen But they're telling us we're selling that All we wanna do is open doors, man Hear me out, frozen Cause they left us in the cold Don't hear it, I took my chance No one bringing it home Because I've been around the world I've seen so many places Living the life I work so hard to make it Living my life at a hundred miles an hour I'm in love with you Like it was the first time Like the very first time I'm still loving you Like it was the first time Like the very first time, yeah I will never leave
Recording sessions for Sugar Babe's next album proceeded in Los Angeles and New York in mid-2009, with additional sessions in London. The group primarily worked with Red One, Ryan Tedder, Stargate, Fernando Garibay and the Smeezingtons. One of the album's tracks, No More You, was written by Neo. Keisha compared the song to Rihanna's Hate That I Love You and Take A Bow. She told BBC Radio 1's Newsbeat, I think it's given us a fresh energy again. I think the one thing we wanted to do was come back with something different. She also admitted the girls had become complacent around the time of Cat Bites and Spotlights, but that they were still very proud of that album. The new material would mark the first time that Sugar Babes had not contributed to the songwriting process. Okay, on the brink of your seventh studio album, how does it feel to have sustained in the industry for so long? Um, it feels great. I think it's nice um, that we're still relevant. Um, I think, you know, we've learned that the most important thing is to have longevity. Because okay. everyone's, you know, people can have a hit record, but it's all about staying power and how long you can continue it for. So we're really proud of ourselves. Okay, it was recently announced that you signed with Jay-Z's Rock Nation label in the US um, and that your next LP will be your stateside debut. Um, we haven't planned what records we, if we do put out records in, in America, we haven't planned what songs they'll be. Hopefully, obviously we'd love the chance to release over there and if we do that we'll be under Rock Nation who also a and r this album. So, we're just waiting for the uh, invitation and then We'll, uh, we'll go forward. Yeah, <laughs> Tell us a little bit about how the deal came about. Well, we know that our managers were kind of going back and forth um, with Rock Nation for a while, but we were really surprised because not a lot of people know this, but Rock Nation um, also kind of manages like a lot of songwriters and producers. And we know that Alexandra Burke is over there writing with them at the moment. Um, so we were so amazed to actually get the, the, the chance to be able to actually sign to them. Yeah. And. Um, so basically the plan was for us to go over there for a few weeks or maybe a few months and work on the album but it just so happened that the album took us like eight weeks to do back and forth from LA to New York. We worked with some amazing people, we worked with Stargate, they sound like Beyonce, Rihanna, Neo's written a song on the album and uh, we've always been quite hands on with the writing side of things but obviously to have new writers come on board it was amazing and we got to literally pick every song that's on the album um, and yeah, we worked with Red One as well. Yeah, it was, it was an amazing experience. That's awesome. Keisha, I've seen you on Twitter. That really very has, thank God. Um, we heard you asking fans for ideas for the album title. Mm -hmm. Have you come up with an album title yet? We haven't decided on the album title and we've had some really, really good um, suggestions from our fans. Mm. There was one that everybody loved and the record company loved and unfortunately we haven't been able to go with that title because of politics and yeah. things like that so we haven't <coughs> decided on it yet but we were really disappointed because it was a really good one that we had mm. we can't, we can't say, say to be honest we don't but want there's to let that person yeah. down yeah. Okay. say oh what could it be yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> one of our favourite actually we should just say tug of war <laughs> And that was one that we. Yeah, I'm joking. She's <laughs> <She's laughs> <She's laughs> <She's laughs> The whole day, everyone's oh, faces go. Oh right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll let yeah, right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, let's sorry. briefly talk about your last album, Cat Fights and Spotlights. Yes. Um, while well received in some circles, the album didn't do as well as I'm sure you would have hoped it to have done. Um, what's your take on the album's performance? We loved the album, we, we did, thought it was so cool. It. We made a conscious decision to kind of go back to the days of like the Supremes and to kind of strip things back and make it more about being with a live band because we are doing so many gigs around that time. And you know, most artists that come out, they would love to have you know, a top 10 album with a number two single and that's what we got. But you know, the pressure was on for us because everyone was expecting a number one. Yeah. And it's like, you know, there's no fail failure in having you know, a top 10 album, definitely not. Um, and again, you know, it's all about longevity, you know. You win some, you, you lose some, but that's definitely an album that we're proud of. Yeah. It's an awesome album, by the way. Seventh blooming album. Yes. Seventh album. Eight if you'd include the greatest taste. Oh my God, yeah. yeah. God, that's making me feel really old. Okay. <laughs> um, you guys were in America. How recently were you in America? Three weeks ago or something. A couple like weeks that. ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you weren't just chilling, you weren't just shopping. Uh, you were signing some deals, making some deals, big business. You were signed to Rock Nation, Jay-Z's new label. Yeah. Um, is Jay-Z there when you do the signing? 
No. Uh, okay. <laughs> but with us, he wasn't anyway. Is he on a tannoy? <laughs> Hello, ladies. Just, uh, hey, girls. He welcome. Just, we were just travelling low, so we didn't get to meet him this time. But yeah. hopefully another time. But we heard that uh, Rihanna is a, a, a sugar babe now. <laughs> She's the fourth sugar babe, which I kind of hurt my feelings, but sure. <laughs> um, yeah, how close did you get to Rihanna? When we were um, in the studio recording, we'd leave the studio, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the next day we'd sit with our manager, and we'd go through tracks which we liked and which we were going to keep. And on the ones that we said that, oh, we're not too sure about that, he'd be like, well, Rihanna likes this. And we're like, well, how did she hear it? She I was came in the studio <laughs> when you guys left. So it had so happened that every time Just we left, she yeah, was coming in. And she actually heard a lot of our tracks finish before we did. So uh, this album definitely has the Rihanna approval stamp. All over From what it. we hear, yeah. The new single is called Get Sexy. Have you sampled Right Said Fred? Yes, it's so yeah. We actually did go into the studio thinking, you know what, remember that song? Remember that tune? Yeah, yeah. Remember that friend. tune, yeah. <laughs> right Said Fred. We kind of was just like, you know, we were in the studio and there was a completely different chorus on it. Yeah. And then the, the producer, um, he was just like, Oh, wouldn't it be cool if we were like, you know, like, I'm um, too sexy for I'm um, to be. He made it sound oh, so cool. Were you like, that's been done in England in a whole different no, way? No, he's massive. He's new. Yeah. Seven weeks or something. Yeah, it was like proper. So he was referencing right there, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the song is just like a, a feel good dance song. It's, it's about saying, when I walk down the street, wherever I are, they're saying, hey, sexy. Oh. Well, you Basically, said it was the it's American more cheeky. Slang on it, hey, wherever sexy. I are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which are the lyrics, anyway? It, Get Heidi out of America <laughs> hanging out with rappers. Yeah, yeah. Heidi's <laughs> new nickname is actually yeah. Two Piece. You were called a Two Piece. Because one of my lyrics is in a two piece at the beach, they say, hey, sexy. Right, you're right, Two Piece. Oh, wow. Hurry up, Two Piece. That's good. I'd quite like to make ghetto names for all three of you. That's, <laughs> oh, that's, that's cool. something for the we next interview. We have, we have got. Okay. Yeah, we've got. Well, mine's now Two Piece, two but piece. it used to be Twink. Twink. <laughs> Twink, yeah. I don't know who came up with that. Pack. Yeah, Twinkie. <laughs> Amel, what was Mine yours? Was, um, <laughs> Liv. Yeah, Liv. And I, did I, I have Madam or John something? Everyone was called the leggings. Oh, sure. Yeah, so I was wearing leggings. Well, not today, but yeah. yeah. That's a day. And, uh, I think mine was Madam. Or Madam. Oh, Madam. yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's Little good. Madam. Released on the 30th of August 2009, the first single from the Babe's upcoming album would be the electro R&B track Get Sexy. It was written by Fred Fairbrass, Richard Fairbrass, Rob Manzoli, Philip Lawrence, Ari Levine, Bruno Mars, and produced by the latter three under their stage name The Smeezingtons. Get Sexy received mixed reviews from contemporary music critics, some reviewers criticised its lack of originality, while others praised its production and lyrics. The song peaked at number two on the UK singles chart and number three on the Irish singles chart. Elsewhere, the song impacted the charts across Europe, namely in Belgium peaking at number 21, number 41 in Germany and number 42 in Sweden. It also charted on the singles charts in the Czech Republic and Slovakia, both at number 48. Get Sexy also became the group's first single since About You Now to chart in Australia, where it peaked at number 75. Come watch me walk Cause I'm too sexy in this club Too sexy in this club So sexy it hurts If you feel sexy in this club Then go ahead, toast it up Take it down Let's get sexy right now Get sexy right now Get sexy right now Get sexy right now, get, get sexy right now. Some of the murmurings you've been hearing on the site. 
um, what's your response to this? I hate it when people say too commercial because yeah. you're just getting on with what, what you do and yeah. you want it to be a success and the more people who enjoy it the better. You can't please everyone yeah. Yeah. in a and day. With the, on the last album when we didn't do commercial, we went to more commercial. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so I think want. yeah the most important thing is for you to move with the times, so for you to stay relevant. Music the music industry changes so much. Like a couple of years ago it was saturated with like those of indie bands and it's all about the survival of the fittest to be honest and you can't please everyone but you have to you know, it's all about winning new fans on board, and I think that we've done that. And, and the, you know, top it off as well, we absolutely love it ourselves, yeah. so that's yeah. the main thing. Okay, we've all seen the Get Sexy video, um, we see you guys are dancing a lot more now. Yeah. Um, can yeah. we expect a bit more winding and grinding from you ladies? Hell yeah! <laughs> we, really, we really enjoyed it. We did, and we've been working with like Beyonce, Destiny's Child, and Choreographer, like he's hardcore and he's amazing. So we've been doing yeah. a lot of rehearsals and working really hard, and that's why we feel like we've that everything in our performance, everything musically, live stuff, and but we've enjoyed it. Stepped up, yeah, we've like, loved it. Yeah. Yeah. We actually come off in a sweat. Now. Exactly. We, we made room. a conscious decision. We were like, you know what? Because we were always just like, okay, we sing live. We're with we're with our band, and that's it. But then, you know, it's all about showmanship as well and being able to do other things. So we kind of was like, yeah, let's just push ourselves a little bit. And it was so funny because the choreographer, like proper American guy, was just like, girls, I didn't know y'all could move like that. So yeah. he's like adding all these things in and he's like, like all feeding himself yeah. and doing that in all hair. It was hilarious. You're one of the few groups in which there's no designated lead singer. Um, and all of you are vocally competent, you're all vocally amazing, I would say. Um, saying that, was it a conscious decision to have the lovely Miss Verba um, take the forefront and get sexy? No, it was Bruno. Every right. song with two suits. Yeah. yeah, like there's a few songs with your um, vocals and the like. No more you, but the one that Nia wrote for us. That that's more predominant. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's but, just um, been different ones for each of us. As with well, the so. Sneezingtons, Bruno, uh, they're the ones that produced the first single, and um, it's so funny because. Get Sexy was kind of like, it was supposed to be more of a rap. When I'm walking in the curve and then a sexy, it was me going, I'm sorry, I really can't do the whole rapping thing. So I can't we kind of put the melody to it and try to make it about that. But again, it's all about a swag and a certain, you know, and then it was kind of more a Mel's and sort of thing. that suits it more. Yeah. We're not, yeah, we're not precious over things no. like that. If it's, you know, Whatever. I wouldn't be like, no, I want to try the rap, okay? I'm, yeah. I'm going to yeah. Yeah. If yeah. I had a dime. Yeah. It's, just it's like all about personalities <laughs> and who suits it. And I think that's the thing, it has to be real, you know? Yeah. 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 Congratulations to me on your number one since you tried up. Thank you, man. Um, are there any solo projects or outside the sugar wave projects that we can expect from you ladies anytime soon? No, I mean, we're really open to kind of doing different things with other people. And um, we've all kind of uh, at one point either written with other artists or four other artists or done things and um it's just if the right thing comes yeah. along. Yeah, it needs to make sense. Yeah. yeah. But you know our priority is obviously <laughs> Sugar Bay, so support your fellow Sugar Bay today. How yes. are relations in the band, the three of you? Uh oh we hate each other. Damn bitch is coming nerves, no I'm just kidding. No, we're really, really well. Um yeah, everything's going really well. We're just excited and I guess we can't wait just to hear feedback. On, on the new stuff, that's what we're waiting for. So, um, yeah. And what, what sort of part do you guys play in the in the production of, the, of these albums? Like, do you, oh, are you involved in the writing process? Um, actually, it's so funny because we've always made sure from the beginning, even in the first lineup, when we were 14. You know, we co-wrote Overload, and 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 uh, there was like, if we had 10 tracks on the album, we would have written eight tracks on the album. Um, so we definitely pride ourselves as singer and songwriters. And for this album, we kind of had a we made a decision to incorporate more writers um, just because it's nice to just hear what other people can bring to the table you know because I think we've kind of written about so many different things and it was nice for people to come in and, and say can you relate to this situation so we had a lot of new writers on this album but before them previously uh, we were writing our asses off and hence why my PRS checks are always quite big <laughs> I can't believe I said that that sounds really ignorant but that's the only way I can like prove it I'm just like you know yeah, you know we're out. doing we're doing very very well on that side of things. Um, That's good and yeah, so, so yeah. you've now got a committee of writers helping out. Does that mean the sound's going to be different on this album? Um, I think our sound is within the vocals, you know, and um, I think everyone knows. I guess you know when when it's our song. So um, when we're singing, we're just you know 
I don't know, they're pushing us, I guess, but we still have that Sugar Babe, you know, sound. Although the, art, the people that we're working with were American producers and writers, we were waving the British flag. We were like, okay, this is all about the UK, and we don't want to go over there and like forget our roots or anything. And our fans are so amazing over here, so we'd hate to do that. So, yeah. After the release of the album's first single, and just two months before the album's then scheduled November 2009 release date, it was reported by the media that Amel had left the Sugar Babes, having missed two engagements promoting their new material. It was also rumoured that Jade Ewan, the UK's 2009 Eurovision Song Contest entrant, would be joining the group to replace her. Keisha, however, denied any drama within the group and insisted that Amel would remain a member for the moment. Later, on the 21st of September 2009, it was announced that Keisha, the sole original member of the group, had departed from the Sugar Babes to be replaced by Jade Ewan. Keisha later revealed on Twitter that it was not her decision to leave, resulting in some journalists describing her as having been sacked. According to Amel and Heidi, both women had wanted to quit the Sugar Babes, only to find that their group's management decided that they would follow them rather than find two new members for Keisha. Keisha stated in 2020 that she did not know that she was ousted from the group until after the public announcement of her departure had been made. The new member, Jade, was subsequently flown to the US to film the music video for the Sugar Babes' next single, About a Girl, mere days after Keisha's exit from the group. So when did you get the call? Um, gosh, it was like five o'clock. I woke up in the morning. I was meant to go to a rehearsal and I thought I'd set through my alarm and this crazy woman was shouting through my letterbox. I was like, <laughs> what is going on? So I go downstairs and it's our manager. It was like 5 a.m. And she was like, if you want to come, if you want to be in the band, you've got to pack your bags and get on the plane now. And I was like, I don't even, I didn't even know where my passport was, anything. I was just like, and I was Did you know there. which band they were talking about? Yeah, yeah. I just, but I, I didn't know at the time um, that Amel and Heidi had left. I thought maybe Amel had left. Because that's and what I, you were on the paper. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, of course. So I just was like, and then I, you know, I got on the plane, but I didn't, uh, the whole way there, I was like, what if they don't like me? What if I meet them? And I changed my mind. What do I, I do? Do I come back? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and did you hit it off straight away? When you yeah. yeah we well, we had pancakes. And yeah, I love pancakes. And in your room. I was like, all right. Yeah. All right, now we've heard all kinds of rumours about, you know, the lineup change, but I want to hear it straight from your mouths. What happened? Um, me and Amel left the band last year when we were in America. Um, you probably left the Sugar Babes. We left, we, the, we, we we left, left the Sugar Babes, sugar babes yeah. yeah. And then our, we went due to foot because we were supposed to be shooting our video the next day. Right. Um, which obviously didn't happen. No. And um, we went due to fly home for like a few more days. And then our record company contacted us and said, would you carry on with somebody else? And, and obviously that was, it was, we were like, we'd love to, to carry on, to, you know, our job and everything yeah, else, but it was a big decision. We were like, you know, it depends on who the person is, if we click and if they want to join and stuff like that. So it was a whole mad, mad time. Basically they were like, you know, we've got, you know, we've got, we've got this girl and she's, she's break singer and everything. They told us her name and we happened to have seen her on Eurovision mm. in Germany. I always remember it was Germany, wasn't it? Yeah. Like watching her. We we're like, oh, she seems lovely. She had yeah. a great voice. So, um, and then we met each other on a Sunday. <laughs> on a Sunday, <laughs> sure. On a Sunday. Um, Where did you meet? In a, in a hotel room. In a hotel? Nice. Yeah, had Quaint. pancakes, fruit, like, it was nice and chilled. And they literally felt really natural, really happy, and then mm. we went straight to rehearsals together and shot the video the next day. Oh, just like that? Yeah. yeah. We can't afford any mistakes. About a Girl was written and produced by Red One, who wrote the song in collaboration with maker Bert Riddick. The song was released on the 8th of November 2009 in the UK and Ireland as the album's second single and the first to feature vocals by Jade. Critical response to the song was mixed, with some critics labelling it as unoriginal and generic. However, the song did peak at number 8 in the UK singles chart, number 4 on the Scottish singles chart and inside the top 20 on the Irish singles chart at number 14. It additionally charted in Poland at number 22.
it was reported that Amel had flown to Austria for treatment for nervous exhaustion resulting from the chaos regarding the lineup change. Amel, bless her, is not very well, so she's gone abroad to get herself sorted. And um, we said, well, look, we'll do something in the future. But Heidi and Jade said, no, we're definitely going to come along. So a round of applause for the girls. Yay! So we'll ask Jade first of all. Jade, what is it, bit, what is it like being the newest member of the Sugar Babes? Terrifying, but, <laughs> but fun. I'm having such a good time. It's just a lot of songs to learn. Um, I didn't realise how many songs, but so I'm just catching up. Just finished doing the album, and I'm having a wicked time. It's so great to be here. It's my first sort of moment on it's the your, stage. It's sort of like your first UK my debut. Gig. It's your debut. You're not even singing. <laughs> And, and Heidi, I know you desperately wanted to come to Leeds because you were just saying at the back you let so many people down. Now, she hasn't let anybody down, has she? Yeah, I thought it was really nice that you'd actually come here today and just sort of say hi and meet all the kids and everything. Uh, anything you want to say to the people at Leeds? Um, just thank you for your support and we're sorry we can't perform tonight. Oh, I know. <laughs> come on, you can do it. Let's give it up for Jade and Heidi from the Sugar Waves. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, so what happened then? Yeah. Uh, Keisha left the band uh, because you weren't getting on with her. Is that right? Or... It was just like a very difficult time. Like we still really respect her. We don't want to wish her any, you know, harm. Like we love her to bits still, and we've had really good times together and everything. But you know, it just got to the point where we we couldn't do any more. Like we just tried so hard, and it just me and Heidi wasn't ha weren't happy basically. And at the end of it, when we got to LA, we just. We, could, we got to a point, we know that everyone's got a, you know, a line, that when you cross that line you have to, you can't do it anymore. So uh, we basically left the band. And you two left the Sugar we left, Babes? yeah. So we, we thought... We're, that was never well. publicised, so that was just between management before it hit the... Yeah, we just literally told we, yeah, yeah. We, we got there and it just got to a point where right. we couldn't take anymore. We mm. were like, we can't do this anymore. And then 
over the course of a crazy week that you know we would approach to carry on together and then introduce to Jade and and then shut the video two days later. Yeah. So hold on, you were you were brought in and then you went straight in to shoot a video without any real run up. Two yeah, days after we met. Yeah. yeah. We like none of us could make a decision until we met. So I met the girls on the Sunday, but when I was out there, you know, until we met, I, I was like, well, maybe I'll go back. Maybe we'll decide actually, we won't we won't do it. So um, we decided on the Sunday, okay, this is what we're going to do, and then we had a day of rehearsals and then the video on the Tuesday. So how are you getting yeah. on with Jade? Do you like really her? Well. <laughs> <laughs> what a good really well. They have to say yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Jake. <laughs> New album called Sweet Seven. Yes. And that's out, I think it's out next in March February. now. February. Is it February yeah. or March? Okay, so we had to wait for that. How come we're waiting for that? Um, I think, you know, Mel had had a bit of time yeah. off and we didn't want to rush it. You know, we hadn't done any promotion and we just want our fans to hear what's on the album yeah. before we release it. So this way we get to do gigs and show people what's on there. And, Top um, producers you've had on this, Yeah, you? yeah, so we just didn't want to, like, waste it. You know, we want to really show people yeah. what it's about. Exactly. And how are you? Because I'm, I'm, we've read press and everything else that you were suffering a little bit with nervous exhaustion, working too hard, and is everything all right now? Yeah, definitely. I'm absolutely better, you know. Um, I just got to the point, you know, it was very difficult for me and Heidi towards the, you know, from the other... Um, line up yeah. and um, basically I just needed to get away and just um, shut off and just take a new look in. I don't know, just yeah. sort my, my head out basically and, uh, and I think... Sometimes it happens. Yeah, it does, you know, and um, I feel really good um, and we're just getting on with things and it's just really exciting times for us and we're just really looking forward to the future. And uh, just, I mean, I have to ask you this, why did Keisha leave? What, you know, what was going on? What was causing all this? Um, it kind of, it got to a point where it wasn't working and we really did try for so long and, um, you know, I just think life's too short to be feeling like that and right. we just couldn't make it work and I think, you know, we don't want to go into all the details but as, as a person I feel that myself and Amal made the right decision as, as morally, you know, yeah. and our, our label stood by us and our management and just want to say while we're on here, thank you to our fans because yeah. our midweek's been brilliant this week and I know it's not easy for the fans to accept, you know, a new change and they've really stuck by us. Yeah, so they really have. It well, I think it'll be easy when the change comes in the yeah. form of Jade You yeah. and I think <laughs> But the label sent you the wrong album. Yeah, they sent me the songs that didn't make the album. Okay. So I had to learn two versions of Sweet Seven uh -huh. and I was really proud of myself. I was like, oh yeah, I've learned it. I went into the studio to start recording and they were like, okay, we're going to start with this. I was like, I don't know that one. <laughs> and they were like, what about this one? No. This one? I don't know any of these. <laughs> and then they were like, I think you've learnt the wrong album, oh, so no. let's go back. Who yeah, sent that out? It was Sam. Our manager. manager. <laughs> yeah, she did sax. <laughs> so the album's been put back a bit, hasn't it? Because you've had to re-record all the vocals. Is that um, right? That's not the reason it's been put back, but yeah, I did re-record the vocals. I literally did the album in about four days, but um, we wanted to promote it, and Amel was away for was a bit. Away for like a while. And um, yeah. you're in and rehab, was... according to the papers. <laughs> rehab, man. Honestly, when I heard that one, I laughed. Just put it, put I it true. Laughed. What happened? Um, basically, you know, everyone, you know, I'm human at the end of the day, and you know, when something's been going on for absolutely ages, yeah. it does take your toll mentally. So um, I was a bit like, I just need to shut off for a little while. Um, um, you went on holiday? It wasn't a holiday. It was. It's like a, a place where... Um, it's not a clinic, it's nothing like that at all, God. Um, but basically, it's like a relaxation place. It's okay. like really it's shut off, it's completely in the middle of nowhere. Um, it just gives you a time, it's, you know, people like, with stressed jobs and stuff go there and stuff and try and shut off for once. And mm -hmm. I just needed a different outlook on life and um, sort myself out, basically. And I feel like I have done that and we're back. So it's all good. <laughs> okay. Jake, was that a hard decision to join the band or did you... Because you're, you're not... You, you've got other people who wanted to work with you and stuff, haven't you? So It was hard like in the offers. sense... I didn't have to think about whether... I knew Sugar Babes are amazing and I knew it was guaranteed success almost, but it was hard stepping into somebody else's shoes because, you know, people are always going to prefer the original. It's like when someone does a cover. So you feel under more pressure to prove yourself because everyone was like, well, they're not as good. So I just thought, oh, I don't know if I want to have that. I'd rather start out fresh or I don't know. But in the end, I just thought, do you know what? You live once, go for it. And if I want to go solo or whatever, I can do that at the end, so and I think it's the best decision I ever she made. She's got solo already. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Controversy. But so what's the link with Jay Z? Uh, have you kind of co signed a label with him, or what's the deal there? You signed to his label, Rock Nation.
in Is that America. to break the US? Is that the idea? Or? Hopefully, next that's, year. That's the plan. Yeah. Yeah. But it was amazing because that's the, why we had the opportunity to work with such amazing producers. Right. Like we we wanted to work with these people for uh, eight years. So um, they put us with the likes of like Stargate, did like Britney, uh, Britney Spears, Beyonce, and yeah. Rihanna, I and mean, like Red Wine, done Lady Gaga, and Leo the, wrote a song. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. So yeah, yeah. yeah, we had a really good time doing this album. Mm. We're going to get Christmassy with the help of three lovely ladies. Jade, Amel and Heidi doing their very own version of Santa Baby. It's the Sugar Babes! Sugar Babes. Hi, I'm Heidi from the Sugar Babes. Hi guys, it's Jade from the Sugar Babes. You're on set with us today for their new video, Where My Kiss. I'm on set today at the Sugar Babes shoot, doing the nails. We all started really early. I got picked up at half six this morning. And the girls come in and they're always bubbly. The early mornings, man, I'm just not a fan. They're always great, they're always full of life. I literally feel like I was punched in the face this morning. Two big brown eyes just bulging out of my head. <laughs> Um, Paul does the hair. I have a regular coat hanger that Paul stole. <laughs> Great, I'll go down for it. He's a thief! This is the Sugar Babes call sheet. If maybe the producer or I was to fall sick all of a sudden that someone else could come in, pick up the sheet and know exactly what to do. Girls didn't have a lot of time to learn this choreography, so it's been quite stressful today. Apart from that, absolutely fun. with a lot of fun doing it. They're creating a dance army in post-production, um, so there's going to be loads of them in this big, wide space. It's quite futuristic. If anyone's watched iRobot, it's one of my favourite films. Because all we're cutting is girls with green screen behind them, so it's mainly focusing on their performances. So I've kept the moods very kind of um, android, robotic, with a little bit of military, but they're still adding their sexy flavour to it. So check it out. Leading up to a video, I try and watch what I'm eating and go to the gym. When it comes to the actual day, you just need food to get through it because of the long hours. Favourite food on shoot days is the fruitcake. I love it. They always have really nice food, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, spaghetti, bolognese and meatballs. Hi, I am Sam McCurdy and uh, I'm a DLP on the uh, Sugar Peeps uh, new pop rom. It's quite difficult what we've ever done before, so we're quite intrigued by how everything's going to be. I don't know, added and what's his thoughts about why there's, I don't know, green stickers over there because you can't stand over on that side. At the minute, we've got a lot of tracking markers, a lot of green screen, and the director, Martin, is talking to them about 
doing a bit of freestyle. Go back to the States with all the rushes and that's when it's going to look all being post. It's always good for me as a director to have this green screen and I always can show them later, yeah, it's going to be beautiful and beautiful and beautiful, but they don't see anything right now. I have no idea what the video is going to look like. My lipstick makes us feel the show. The best thing about videos is getting dressed up, trying new looks out. It's almost like you get a chance to become someone else. The energy is great, I love to work with them, the song is a complete hit. So check it out. For a promo green screen shot, it's been a lot of fun and a good giggle. It's three beautiful girls, so what can be worse, right? Can't wait to see the end result. Um, Jay, let's talk about your pony, ponytail oh, yeah. thing that's going on, the big, huge Gosh. ponytail. We wanted to do a high ponytail and make a shape out of it, but we didn't know how we were going to make it actually stay. Yeah. So then we saw a hanger <laughs> hanging up on the rail, so um, our hairstylist, Paul, cleverly used the invention. Um, and then, yeah, we put the wire through it, a bit of um, string around it, and bent it into shape, but it was, like, really difficult doing the routines because... The coat uh, anger in your Yeah, because yeah. I kept, I couldn't judge how wide it was coming out, so I nearly took the girl's eyes <laughs> out, or like it was quite like, I want to stand on that side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like your shoes, you like to wear, someone step on them, there's gonna be a fight <laughs> And the album's called Sweet Seven, um, yeah. tell us about the album, what can we expect from it? It's quite an up-tempo, yeah. up-tempo, yeah. dancey, feel-good. Um, there's a couple of ballads on there. One power ballad that we absolutely love. It's like mm. one of our favourite songs of the album. And uh, another one that was written by uh, Neo called No More You. Oh, wow. And uh, the rest of it is quite up-tempo. Um, Party. Yeah, yeah. It makes you want to dance. Yeah. It's a real cool album. I'd buy it. Yeah? If I was in the yeah, group. Yeah. yeah, that's good. You should buy it anyway. <laughs> Where My Kiss would be released as the third single from the upcoming album on the 21st of February 2010. It served as the final official single from the band before they eventually disbanded in 2011. It was written by Fernando Garibay, Bruno Mars, Philip Lawrence and the Jackie Boys and produced by Garibay. Where My Kiss debuted and peaked at number 7 on the UK singles chart, becoming the group's third consecutive top 10 single and 18th top 10 single overall. The song debuted and peaked at number 9 on the Irish singles chart becoming the Sugar Babes ninth top 10 single in Ireland, Where My Kiss also debuted at number 4 on the Scottish singles chart. The song's commercial performance throughout Europe allowed it to appear on the European Hot 100 singles chart where it peaked at number 27. The 5th of March 2010 finally saw the release of the group's new album, Sweet Seven. As a result of the group lineup change, Sweet Seven was re recorded to feature the vocals of new member Jade and for the removal of Keisha's vocals. This would mark the only Sugar Babes album to feature none of the original members. Despite the high profile input with songwriting and production, Sweet Seven was negatively received by critics and was awarded a 39 out of 100 according to aggregated reviews at Metacritic. The negative reviews focused on the loss of Keisha as well as a lack of identifiable sound and soul from the project and overall lacking originality. However, Sweet Seven would be the first album since Taller In More Ways to contain at least three top 10 hits. 
Sweet Seven peaked at number 14 in the UK and number 35 in Ireland, becoming the group's lowest charting album in each respective country since their 2000 debut album One Touch. Sweet Seven debuted at number 5 on the Greek International Albums chart, staying on the chart for two weeks. The album debuted at number 92 on the Swiss Albums chart, becoming their lowest charting album in that country, excluding Catfights and Spotlights, which failed to chart. Promotion for the album ended after the release of the final single so that the group could begin work on a new album. Sugar Babes. Just shut up and watch me walk. The girls are back with their brand new album, Sweet Seven. Includes three massive top ten hits, Get Sexy, About a Girl, and the new single, Where My Kiss. The new album from Sugar Babes, out Monday. It was amazing, it was really good. Very good. Oh, absolutely <laughs> brilliant. We come all the way from Liverpool. Very good morning to you all. Um, and you're looking fantastic. Thank, Thank you. And brilliant. Now, let's just establish who the Sugar Babes are. 
because you started out as a completely different group yeah. and you are now none of you original members of the Sugar Babes. Well, no, the lineup has changed quite a bit over the last few years. Um, but I think, you know, every member that's been part of the band has helped the success and the history of the band. And, and now we're the Sugar Babes, you know, it's evolved and it's continued. And I've been in the group for nine years and Mel's been here for four and a half. And, and they we're planning that Jade's going to be yeah. <laughs> for, for the next five. We're not planning on any more changes. As so. you're here, I need to ask you about what's happening with the Sugar Babes. Goodness me, the lineup changes over the years. I can't keep up with it. You know, it's been yeah. extraordinary. There's been so many different changes. And now, well, what, what is the state of play? Have you spoken to any of the girls? What's um, happening? I spoke to Keisha, and it's just, to tell you the truth, I just, me, as personally, I just don't think the Sugar Babes is the Sugar Babes anymore. I mean, it would have been different. That's the original lineup. That yeah, was it would have been different if the there was, you know, if Keisha had stayed in it and yeah. someone else had gone, you know, then mm. it'd be Sugar Babes. But wow, but you know, I suppose now there's no original Sugar Babes. We should just all reform again. Why don't you? <laughs> you, you and Keisha could do. Uh, you, you know what? I mean, to tell you the truth, it, it's just a nice, it's a nice thing to know that I still have contact with both of them. Yeah. Um, and it's just. I'm very, I'm quite disappointed. Mm. I'm actually quite disappointed. Obviously, the brand name of Sugar Babes will always carry on. Yeah. But to say that there's no original in the Sugar Babes, it just mm. kind of puts it down a bit. Yeah, it's a bit strange. Mm. I think everybody was quite, quite shocked because we weren't yeah. sure. Because first of all, we heard that Amelia was going. That right. was the thing that she was, she was going. Then she wasn't going, and then so it's all, it's all going a bit mad. Did they all fall out, or is it just what do you think? No, happened? I mean to tell you the truth. I mean, I heard there was rumours about Keisha being a bully, but I'd say that's all lies. I mean. You know, the reasons why people had left is not because of, you know, of bullying, mm. to tell you the truth. I think everyone, you know, everyone's got their own opinion about things, but they're all grown women. Yeah. You know, no, if, you know, no one's going to allow another woman to, mm. but like, I would never let another mm. person bully me. So it's a whole bullying you know, subject. Yeah. I think it's all rubbish. Well, I could see the two of you getting together, you know, and be and be it sugar sugar women. Well, you know, I mean, we're all growing <laughs> up. I haven't been with the sugar race for so long, no, and long time. you know, and I've had my my years of growing up and mm. learning about what I want in life sure. and getting to look after my daughter. So, you know, hooking up with the rest of the girls, you know, I think that could be an amazing idea. It's a great idea. Definitely. It's a great idea. In 2010, former group member Mutia applied to the European Trademarks Authority for ownership of the Sugar Babes name. The application was submitted amid the controversy of Keisha's departure, in which Mutia insisted that the Sugar Babes had ended without a founding member still in the group. It was confirmed that Mutia had obtained rights to use the name on paper, cardboard and goods, namely stationery, paper gift wrap and paper gift wrapping ribbons. In the same month, Sugar Babes were dropped by Rock Nation due to poor sales of Sweet Seven. And then a span is thrown into work, the works when Mutia, who used to be a member, Mutia Buena, wants the name Sugar Babes. I don't know how true, true that is. is. Okay. I mean, we've only heard it through interviews. Through the press, so yeah. we, we, we don't know how true that is. but. You know, we're, we're the sugar babes and we're carrying on and... The only rights she, she has now, um, she got it, she had in April, is one of the clause that we didn't go for, which is um, wrapping paper, ribbons and cardboard, is that right? Mm -hmm. um, to use the sugar babes name. Um, and we've never, we've never used it, we've never wanted it. It's well, there's no use When our management, it. they sort all that side of stuff out and when they you know, registered or whatever they do for us to continue to use the name. They didn't apply for that side anyway because it's not something we've ever used in the previous 12 years. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't affect, affect us in anything way, yeah. that we do with our music or, you know. And but I think everyone sort know, of went, oh my God, you're great, you're yeah. you think of the name straight away, don't you? But um, no, we're exactly the same. Yeah. The Sugar Babe's chances of triumphing in the American charts have been dealt a severe blow after Jay-Z dropped the trio from his Rockefeller label. Plus, in another twist to the tale, it seems rapper Jay-Z has been in talks to sign up former Sugar Babe Keisha Buchanan. Keisha, who was one of the original founding members of the girl group, was forced out of the band last September and replaced by 21-year-old Eurovision singer Jade Ewan. This could be just the bittersweet taste Keisha was after. She flies out to LA this week to record her solo album and a meeting with Jay-Z looks likely after the two hit it off at the Brits after show party. 
for the current sugars, Heidi, Amel and Jade, they'll be disappointed they didn't get to fulfil their three-album deal with Rockefeller, which was apparently signed last year. The girls are no longer on the music label's website, and there's more mixed fortunes as Sugar Babe's latest album, Sweet Seven, has started to slip out of the UK charts. It charted at number 14 last week, but indications are it could just be teetering on the top 40 by the end of the week. The album is the first release with the new lineup. Maybe fans are still adjusting to all the changes. The Sugar Babes initially began recording an eighth studio album in April 2010. In June 2011, the group and their management left their record label of 10 years, Island Records, for a new three-album distribution deal with Sony Music's RCA Records, with Crown Music Management Services as the acting record label. In July, the Sugar Babes commented on their new album, saying it was darker, tougher and quite edgy. In another interview, the group stated the new material better showcased their personalities. At the Wireless Festival in London, Keisha approached the current lineup and the girls were reported to have a teary reunion and put the past behind them. It was the first time in two years that she had seen former comrades Heidi and Amel, as well as the first time that she had officially met her replacement, Jade. In a later interview, Keisha revealed she was disappointed by the treatment she received in 2009, but went on to wish the current lineup the best of luck. How good life is now that you're gone. It was just nice to see her yeah. um, and you know she wished us well and we wished her well and it had been a long time since we'd seen her as well. It was quite it was, emotional. Yeah it was you know, really emotional. But it was, it was nice. Aw, the sugar babes on how they kissed and made up with ousted bandmate Keisha at Wireless. It's two years since the 26-year-old was replaced by Jade Ewan. It was nice for me to meet her as well because I've seen her out a couple of times at events and I've never been introduced and I never knew whether I should go over and say hello. It was one of those awkward moments, but um, it's, it's just nice that the air's been cleared. It's, you know, we can now- nice having Yeah, things. and we are gonna be in the same places, you know, at some point, so at least we can just say hello and sort of carry on. Keisha launched her solo career last week with a small gig in central London. What do the babes reckon to that? Yeah. Good luck to her as well, you know. Yeah. She's, she's about to release, isn't she? And, yeah, so we, we wish her the best. We always have, though, so, yeah. yeah. No cat fighting here. for a year and a half where have you been uh we've been busy recording we've been doing festivals uh, back and forwards from europe yeah um just working on the new material sure. so nice. what's the fans reaction been to the new lineup really um, good. good yeah good okay. it's been good yeah they seem to have embraced it quite quickly mm -hmm. um and yeah, we're just excited about bringing out the new material. We just shot the video last week right. of yeah. Freedom. And we're desperate to see something back, but they've got to edit it. And where did you shoot your video? In, in London. In the club, yeah, in London last week. Mom, Mom. It kind of felt like we were on a night out when we were in there. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. like dancing away. Yeah. I think I took it too literally. <laughs> yeah, James took it I should fill you in. Uh, like, when you've got to do like intimate stuff and be all sexy and looking into Ooh, somebody's yeah. eyes that you've only just met five minutes ago and there's a whole camera crew there, it's like really intimidating. Mm -hmm. And um, it was really early in the morning and I was like, well, Heidi suggested it, but she was like, well, you know, maybe if you loosen up, you know, maybe have a little drink before you go on. Nothing too <laughs> hardcore. Mean and have one. Before yeah. You go on. <laughs> so you I know? was like, yeah, cool. But I hadn't had any breakfast and I'm like, not really a big drinker so I've like had a couple of shots been like yeah that'd be good and I got on set and was There's like where it went wrong couple of shots yes. 
I was like, whoa. Like that. It hit me, but then I was like going for it. So when you see the video, I was By the like, time yeah. I got down to the set, because we were getting ready in a separate place, I walked in and Jade was like, whoa. I was like, oh my God, what's she been doing? Hi, we're the Sugar Bays. Hey guys, today we're on set showing our new video, Freedom. The single's out in September, so we hope you enjoy it. I like the lights. When they hit your face, you're good as blind It blackens out your gaze and we're on fire But I'm too caught in you to care Let's walk away So I'm Sean, Sean Desperengo, and uh, I'm directing the Sugar Babes today. So one of the interesting things about the concept for this video was um, you know, we knew we had to make everything look incredibly beautiful, so uh, lighting was really important. Um, and luckily the, the, the girls look fantastic. Um, but it was about making a video where the sugar babies felt like they were at the top of their game. joining us on the set of our brand new video for our new single called Freedom. Um, today we are with Shane Peacock and Val Dooney. This is my favourite bit, the, the big shoulders. We feel based the costumes, it, it gives you that extra confidence when you go on set. So the designers have also been designing for the likes of Lady Gaga, Fergie from Black Eyed Peas, Katy Perry. So, um, you know, it's good to be up there with the, the girls who've got that. In this care. So raise your head, walk fist in the air, for freedom. Dum, 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 dum. Okay, the concept of this video, my take on it is being free, liberating, being powerful. Um, and like, and it's almost that makes sense for us as well because you know, we could we come back from one of the scenes. Like I've got to um, sort of, you know, you sort of stroke and you touch like the odd person, and basically you're bringing them back to life. So you see their eyes open and they sort of want to come, but follow you almost like on this this journey that you're taking through this club that we're in today. But um, it's just a really nice feeling you get from it, and I, I love this whole set. We've got to do quite um, do some dance routines later, so I'm a little bit like, how the hell am I going to dance in these shoes? Because it's quite a slippery floor. So, um, but I'm sure we'll be fine. And um, but as a whole, at the moment, we've had a really good day, wicked day, and um, still really excited. Like had a my tired moment about an hour ago, and I'm back again. So I'm, I'm ready for my next shot. video shoot for Freedom which was amazing. We had such a good time. We had models in that were also dancers as well. Um, the whole setup was meant to be really editorial, high fashion, sexy and dark, a bit of glistening, a bit of dew. Um, and we just had such a good time. It's been a long day but at the same time things have gone really quickly. Thank you for joining us today. We've had an absolute blast. And don't forget to check out our new video on Vivo coming very soon. Take care. Their first and only single under the new RCA label, Freedom, was released for free on the 25th of September 2011. It was written by previous collaborators Jason Pebworth, John Shave, George Astasio, Carl Abrahams, Peter Ingall, Mariah Young-Jones and Rowan Martin, and produced by The Invisible Men in collaboration with Parker and James. Freedom was due for release as the lead single from their anticipated eighth studio album, although the song was later cancelled as an official single and instead made a free digital download via Amazon. Several media outlets reported that the single's release was cancelled due to major radio stations' reluctance to play the song, as well as the presumption that it would underperform in the charts. Despite the controversy surrounding its release, the song received positive reviews from critics who complimented its sound and the use of dubstep.
Your new single of Freedom, obviously, but the new album will be out sort of beginning of next year. Yeah. Is that your plan then? Yeah, okay. And so it's all ready to rock and roll, basically. Definitely. Yeah. We've, yeah, we've had such a good time doing this album, and like because we've, you know, we've we've had the the joy of having time mm. and like not so much pressure on doing the album as well. That's why we've got to know each other so well and like real, really mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And um, but we're still going into studio and writing more because we always do up till the last minute. Yeah. Like push the button was the last song that we recorded off that album. So if we'd stopped, we wouldn't have had, you know, that, that gem, oh, gem okay. right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> keep on going. I think can we have a quick look at one of your videos? We've got one of your, uh, your videos there yeah. from the, a taster for the uh, for the new album. Actually, sort of. Six o'clock in a morning at a freezing warehouse in West yeah. London or something. It was like an 18 hour day. We were so tired. Then we had to have a photo shoot at the end of it at like, I don't know what time Which it was. Which is even hard morning. to focus, let alone try yeah. and act yeah. too sexy. Like, yeah, it was a lot. Yeah, it was interesting. Even. And there we were thinking you were partying away or like, <laughs> yeah. having a great time. Well, the first <laughs> half maybe. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> what genres and styles can we expect from your upcoming eighth album? Wow. Um, <laughs> energy. Yeah, Fun, big vocals. Just, yeah. yeah, big vocals. Okay. That's a lot of personality art. in yeah. this album. Yeah. Songs you can dance to. Yeah, yeah. Love, my favourite. Are there any tracks on there that are particularly personal to you? Because the reason I asked that question is I, I read an interview you did with I think it was Digital Spy not so long ago, where you said this al album was more personal um, and less Americanized. In fact, you said as well. Yeah, what did you mean by that? Well, it's, 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 it's by us. This album, the last album, like, even though we absolutely loved it, um, we didn't. Write, write, you know, and we're writers. We we love to write, and um, you know, and it, 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 in this album, it just feels real to us. It's definitely our album because we've sat there together writing, and um, even our little, you know, random stories, or you know, if you're down or happy, or you've got something to talk about, or your something's happened to your friends. Like we, you know, we put that all in there. Even fun, like we've we've written a lot of fun tracks as well. But um, yeah, it's no, it's good for us because yeah. like we we. We weren't, yeah, we didn't record the album even in the same place at the same time, the last album this was. Yeah. So this time round, we've actually sat in the same room together and, like Amal said, had conversations about it. I mean, we, me and Amal had a great time doing that album. We were in L.A. and New York, but when Jade finally got round to doing it, it was in a shed. In, in a shed? Well, a, sh a little studio in the shed, okay. in, a, in a, our MD's back garden in Wimbledon on its own. Stand up, stand up. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. So raise your hand, one fist in the air for freedom, dum dum dum. For being alive, not having a care for freedom, dum dum dum. Cause the night yeah, yeah, is the night yeah. that we break the speed of life. Afterward, the group began a hiatus to work on solo projects. Amel worked on solo material. Heidi participated in the eighth series of Dancing on Ice. And Jade competed as a contestant on the first series of Splash. So you're doing solo stuff now? Yes, I am. Does that mean the Sugar Babes are over? It doesn't necessarily mean that. Um, we may come back together next year and see the end of 2014, see where our heads are, see if we're in another, you know, doing something else, or see if it just works out, basically. Did but you have a big kind of sit-down discussion and go, right, now we're going to just go away for a while then? Well, yeah, we kind of all wanted to have a bit of a break, and then we wanted to 
try new things and I signed for this album to come out like two years ago so I knew it was going to come out around this time of year so um, but all of us kind of wanted to try new things and then see how we feel and then get back together and Heidi was obviously on uh, Dancing on Ice uh, and Celebrity yeah. MasterChef as yes, well yes she was yes she was, she's a bloody good cook as well so, did she um, used to cook good. for you she's good yeah yeah, yeah. she taught me a few things do you still see them or are you hanging yeah. out and yeah, stuff yeah yeah we still see each other keep in contact on a regular basis like even for advice like really small things like what do you reckon about this because we're really honest with each other what Quite kind brutally. of advice do you ask like, like, um, what do you reckon I should wear for this thing? I send two pictures, like either this dress or this dress. Do you? That's yeah, nice. yeah. <laughs> like things like really small things to so, like asking advice for like work stuff. Like I don't know, what do you reckon of this song? Things like that. So. You are the one who brightens up the day. In March 2013, Jade stated that the Sugar Babes would likely reform to record new music by the end of the year, though with no set release date. And in May, Amel said the group had been writing songs for their next album and hoped to release new music in 2014. However, later that same year, Jade expressed her feelings towards the Sugar Babes' future being uncertain, stating they were pretty much done, which led to reports suggesting the group had split. She was quoted saying, This is a tricky one because I don't feel comfortable lying, saying we're in the studio recording and we're going to bring music out next year, which seems to be the favoured line. I think it's unfair to fans and we should be honest. We kind of fizzled out about two years ago. I do think the lineup changes have obviously got to be a factor, you can't get away from it. Heidi later admitted in a June 2020 interview that the group had conceded in 2011 that it would not be fair for them to continue further due to the controversy and their declining popularity after Keisha's departure. When I was about to be exit the group Sugar Babes, I don't know if many people know, but I didn't actually leave. I was replaced while still being like in the band. I didn't know that. And I remember being sat down and I was basically told, you know, this person feels bullied, that one there feels bullied, this one. And I was like, I was giving that one a foot massage legit like the day before. You know, if, if I had an opinion, you know, it was very much like, okay, you're, you're being a bullied. And that was the word. That whole situation changed the course of my life. Wow. It affected me emotionally, mentally, financially. I have like confidence issues and just feeling like the whole time, like I couldn't have an opinion in the workplace. And it's taken me years to recover and I'm still in the process with therapy and things like that. When I came into the band, suddenly, again, like you said, on social media, it's like Twitter's just kicking off then. There were so many messages and the main focus was that, uh, the presumption was that I was brought into the band because I was lighter, because for some reason it was like more desirable. And I remember being so upset, not just for me, for Keisha. I thought, what an awful thing to read. I, do I doubt very much that she believed it. I hope she wouldn't have believed it, but mm. I just thought, gosh, that's so sad that people are making these kind of assumptions, comparing, literally comparing us in such a brutal, cruel, ruthless way you become open to so much. And my own parents were in the firing line then because people were making comments about their disabilities. <sighs> it was just really difficult. I remember being in the back of a, um, a taxi at the time and luckily the, the driver had no idea, but he put the radio on and they had this whole debate on the radio about the new Sugar Babe member. And I'm listening to it in the back of the car, people calling in with opinions. And I just, I was like, I don't know if I want to do this. You know, this is, I just wanted to sing and singing yeah. used to be my happy place. So now all of a sudden, you know, I'm really having to hear ruthless, unfiltered opinions about me as a young person when I haven't really figured out who I am yet um, and try not to take it on. It was really difficult. Do you think, like, what, what do you think brought the end to the final Sugar Babes? I'm trying to think of how to describe the, the lineup 
the last lineup, which was Hi, not DJ Jaden uh, Amel. Yeah, before you know, the line, the last lineup that didn't contain none of the original members. What do you yeah. think brought that to the, to an end? I'm going to be deadly honest with you, <laughs> Heidi. I felt I felt Heidi's not an original, but she worked her ass off as much as anyone else did. Um, bearing in mind, Siobhan was with us from the early age, but Siobhan also left the group being out. At quite a, quite an early time as well. So Heidi did replace her quite early on in the group. Um, it it was sometimes it was hard to look. It was hard to watch sometimes. Um, there was a lot of complications going on. I wasn't really allowed to be kind of you know. I just remember being told I wasn't allowed to be underneath the same roof as the girls. If you know, it can't be a mutti and sugar babes underneath one roof. Um, what, does, what does that mean? Um, I don't know. I was told I was making people uncomfortable. I don't know. Uh, so I basically couldn't perform anywhere that the sugar babes were. <laughs> well, that seems unfair. It was very unfair. I lost out on a lot of work um, because, you know, it got to the point where everyone was like, well, do we want more or Do we want sugar babes? And I just thought, Ugh. but then um, I feel like, you know, there was a lot of rumours and then there was a lot of things going on. Even till this day, I don't know what's true and what's not. I just remember just being told I couldn't um, but it was hard to watch and obviously I have to ask because I'm sure everyone is, was asking MKS yes yes what is your what are your thoughts on the original Sugar Babes lineup coming back together I think it's a good idea like and even when like I heard the little whispers before then was like do you reckon it's gonna happen I don't reckon it's gonna happen I was like well if I was in the audience I say from the outside I'd want to go and see them I'm just yeah. being honest and um and I like the song I heard the song Flatline and um I think it's really good they're proper singers they can sing live they're musicians I'm intrigued and I think they'll do well do you think if you as the Sugar Babes were still like recording together and they're recording together who do you think would get to number one first? <laughs> oh god uh I don't know who knows with whoever had the better song yeah. but it would be strange even both like I'd say it was it would be strange if both the bands were out at the same time It'd I be, know like, who do you better singers? Um, I think we've all got our strengths yeah. and weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> but it's such an extended group. So if there was a reunion, don't you think all of the incarnations of Sugar Babes should be involved? Because the fans would love mm. everybody to be, like a Mega Babes. Yeah, that it would be a good idea. It'd be a cool idea. Um, it just depends what people want, really. There's so many discussions and I've been approached about different kind of, kinds of things. Um, and the question is, yeah, would can it work with all six of us kind of thing? And um, I'd say yes. Like if it came to actually like a last tour, mm. uh, something to kind of just go through the years and kind of be like, see you later. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, like an Avengers, <laughs> like a musical Avengers. Kind of yeah. Thing. I think it would be nice. In March 2019, Amel revealed that the Sugar Babes had been approached several times about reforming for a farewell tour for the fans. In July, in an interview with Irish broadcaster RTE, she said that there were discussions about a reunion tour featuring all six members of the group. However, this idea would never come to fruition. For the time being, it looked as if Sugar Babes were done for good. However, the original members, Mutia, Keisha and Siobhan, were not quite ready to let the Sugar Babes' legacy end just yet. Thanks for watching. Be And a massive thank you to everyone for following this series. I've had so many amazing comments and the videos have achieved many more views than I'd ever anticipated. A big shout out to my Patreons who are supporting me and my channel. It means so much. And thank you to Sugar Babes for the great music, wonderful backstories and ongoing dramas that have made this series so captivating. And for anyone wondering if I'll be covering MKS and the Sugar Babes, the Lost Tapes, yes, I will at some point, but for now, this 
this is the end of the Sugar Babes journey whilst I focus on other documentaries, but I'll be sure to revisit Sugar Babes soon. Yeah.